All right, today we're going to continue on solving systems of equations, but this time we're going to use a new method or a different method. It's not new, I didn't make it up, but a different method called elimination. Now, so far what we've learned is what is a system of equations? How does it work graphically? Uh, you know, what different types of systems of equations are there? And then we also learned how to solve a system of equations algebraically using substitution, where we got one variable uh, by itself, substituted it for that same variable in the other equation, found out the value of one variable, found out the value of the other variable, and was able to express the answer as an ordered pair. Well, that was substitution. Now what we're going to do is work with what's called elimination, and I'm going to use these four examples to, uh, to walk you through everything you need to know about elimination. Now you can still solve each of these using substitution. Okay, you can, for example, in number one, you can still get one of the variables, either x or y, by itself, plug it into the other equation, do it that way. You can still, but I'm going to use elimination for these, and then we will, uh, we will then model how it can work. Okay, so, and then after that, it's going to be up to you. You can use substitution if you want, you can use elimination, or you can use both. It actually doesn't matter. Okay, so we're going to talk about elimination. The first note you need to know about elimination, and there's, there's really only one note. The note is this. Did you know that you can, you can add or subtract entire equations? You can totally do that, okay? So you can add or subtract entire equations. There's a couple things that, that have, well, one thing has to happen. If you're gonna do that, everything must be lined up. So you must have all your terms lined up and the equal sign. So all the terms and the equal sign must be lined up. And if that's the case, you can add or subtract entire equations. And did you know you can multiply or divide entire equations? So if you have one equation, for example, you can manipulate equations as well. And the way you manipulate equations is by multiplying or dividing the entire equations okay, by, by a certain number. So take, for example, just an example of manipulating equations, an example. Let's say you had x plus y equals 4. You know what you could do? You could multiply that entire equation by 2. Actually, let's multiply it by negative 2. So what we can do, we can manipulate this entire equation. We can multiply the whole thing by negative 2. And if we multiply the whole thing by negative 2, we will end up with negative 2x minus 2y equals negative 8. That's totally legitimate. That means this equation and this equation are actually the same thing. I've just manipulated the original equation. I've multiplied by negative 2. The same token, you can divide entire equations. You can manipulate equations and divide entire equations. Like this equation we have that has negative 2. We can divide the whole thing by 2 if we wanted to. right? If we divide the entire thing by 2, we have the first term divided by 2, the second term divided by 2, and the last term divided by 2. And this equation is the same thing as this equation. This equation is the same thing. All three of these equations are the same. Okay, we're just manipulating them. We can multiply them, we can divide them, and that is a, that is a skill set that we can have. Because if you graphed these equations, the set of all ordered pairs that make the systems that make the equations true, all three would be the same would be the same graph. Okay, so that is something you have to know. Okay, you have to know that you can manipulate equations, and you have to know that you can add and subtract entire equations. Okay, so uh, knowing those two notes will make elimination a whole lot simpler. So I'm going to start with, with the first system. Okay, in this first system of equations, we have two equations. We have 2x minus 3y equals 14, and we have 4x plus 3y equals 46. Okay, so just like substitution, what we have to do is get away from two variables and see if we can get to one variable. Now, take a look at something interesting here. We have a minus 3y here and a plus 3y here. You know what would be cool is that if we added these two things, wouldn't the y's cancel? Like they would, to they would totally disappear. So the only what if 
if we could add these two equations, we could get rid of a y and, and solve for x. We could do that. So that is within our power because remember the note, we can add entire equations. As long as everything is lined up, we can line up the equal sign lined up, the x is lined up, the y is lined up, everything's lined up, we can add the entire equation. So we can, we can do that. With a minus 3y and a plus 3y, we can add up both of these equations. That is a legitimate thing that we could do. And when we do that, let's see what happens. We might, we might get rid of a variable. That'd be great. So we have 2x plus 4x. That, of course, is 6x. Then we'd have minus 3y plus positive 3y. That cancels. Okay, that would cancel out the y's. The y's are completely gone. We'd have 0y. Not there anymore. And then we'd have 14 plus 46. That would leave us with 60. And take a look at this. We have a brand new equation with one variable that we could solve for that variable. Okay, so we can totally solve for the variable. So what have we done? We've add to cancel a y, and now we can solve for x. And if we solve for x, we have one of the coordinates of the solution set. So we can divide both sides by 6. We find out that x equals 10. And once we know we have x equals 10, Remember, that's only one of the coordinates. The solution is an ordered pair. We can plug that x equals 10 back into either of the two original equations to find out what y would be. OK, so we're going to plug in that x and then solve for y. And then we would have our ordered pair solution. So I'm going to use the first equation. I just think these numbers are better to work with. It doesn't matter which equation you use. So I'm going to use the first equation. And I'm going to substitute x equals 10, where I have x. And so I have 2x, right, minus 3y equals 14. And I will be able to solve for y. OK, just got to do some, some number crunching and, and solutions. OK, so 2 times 10 is 20. 20 minus 3y equals 14. I subtract 20 on both sides. And then I divide both sides by negative 3. And I find out that y will be positive 2. Okay, So now I have my y coordinate. I have my x coordinate. I have my y coordinate. That's an ordered pair. Okay, So the ordered pair that I have is my x coordinate and my y coordinate. But before I get too happy and circle that as my answer, remember, I want to test it. I want to test what's going on. So I'm going to use that second equation just to test it, just to be sure. I want to check my answer just to be sure I'm in the right path. So my x is 10, so I have 4 times 10. My y is 2 plus 3 times 2. Well, that equal 46, right? I'm going to test my answer. So I have 40 <coughs> plus 6. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. I'm good. So this, of course, is the ordered pair solution. OK, so I can add entire equations to, uh, to, to find a variable. OK, so that's, that's an example using addition. So now we have found the solution set for the first system. Now we have the second system. What can I do there? And remember, you could still use substitution, right? You can always use substitution, but I'm not modeling substitution. Substitution's old. Now I'm going to model elimination. So here we have the second system. <clears throat> we have x plus 2y equals negative 1. x minus y equals 8. We're going to have a elimination party. Okay, well, what's what's going to happen? Now, can we cancel any of these two variables? Remember, the whole deal is that we wanted to add or subtract to cancel a variable. Well, look here. We have an x here and an x here. You know what we could do? If we subtracted these two things, the x's would disappear. So what we can do here is subtract to cancel x. That is a, that's something we can totally do. We can subtract to cancel x. <clears throat> so let's do that. We can subtract these two equations, but we have to be careful when we're dealing with subtraction because now we have some negative stuff going on. You'll see in a second. All right, so we're going to subtract to cancel x. We have x minus x. Totally gone. No more x. That's what we want. But now we have 2y minus negative y, right? 2y minus negative y is actually 3y. OK, so we have to be careful. We're not adding these two equations. We are subtracting these two equations. We're not adding them, we are subtracting them. So we have 2y minus negative y, positive 3y. Again, being careful. This is not going to be 7. We're not adding these equations, we are subtracting these equations. 
So we have negative 1 minus 8. Negative 1 minus 8 is negative 9. We have to be careful when we are subtracting. So you always have to keep in mind what it is you're doing. And I always refer to the operator as I'm walking along. All right, so now we have subtracted to cancel x. Now all we have to do is solve for y. So we divide both sides by 3. And we find out that y is equal to negative 3. Now we have a value for y. All we have to do now is find a value for x. And we could use either of the original equations. Okay, So I'm going to use the second one this time, because why not? Here's my second equation. But I know that y is equal to negative 3. And I have to be careful here as well. Okay, So I have x minus y x minus y. y is negative 3. You have to be careful with, the, with these signs. You have to be careful with signs. You, can't, you cannot be signed blind or sign ignorant. You can't be signed blind or sign ignorant. So we have x minus negative 3, x minus negative 3. Okay, so be careful. So let's clean that up before we solve for x. Okay, so remember, what, what do we do now? We plugged in, plug in y so we can now solve for x. Now, some of you may be gut instincting, hey, gut instinct, we should add 3 to both sides. Well, if you do that, you'll make a boo-boo because we have a minus negative. Minus a negative is plus. Clean up your equation before you feel like solving. You're going to make life a whole lot easier. So we subtract 3 on both sides. We subtract 3 on both sides. x equals 5. So we now have our ordered pair. The x coordinate is 5. The y coordinate is negative 3. And before I get too happy with that, I'm going to plug it into an equation just to check. Okay, I'm going to use that first equation now to plug it in and check to make sure I'm in the right place. All right, so my x is 5. My y is negative 3. Does that equal negative 1? And I hope so. Right, so 5 plus negative 6, does that equal negative 1? Absolutely, we're good to go. This is the ordered pair solution of that second system. Okay, so we can subtract entire uh, equations to, to solve, to cancel out a variable. Now back to the original set. So we are able to <clears throat> add to, to cancel. We're able to subtract to cancel. Well, what about that third system? That third system looks a little weird, right? Because I can't just uh, you know I can't just get rid of anything. So here's our third system. What can we do? We're going to try and come up with a strategy here, right? So we have our two equations, and we notice that, well, you know what? If I added, if I added these two equations, nothing would cancel. If I added these, I have 3x here and minus 2y here. The equation, the variable wouldn't cancel. If I subtracted, again, nothing would cancel. So remember that first note. Do you remember that we can manipulate equations. We can manipulate an equation. We can multiply an equation by an entire number. So when we look at this system, what we have to think is, hey, is there something I can multiply one of these equations by to, uh, to enable a cancel? So we have to multiply an equation to enable something canceling, Okay, to allow something to cancel. <clears throat> And we can do many correct things. There are many correct things. We could multiply this bottom equation by 2 and subtract. We could multiply the bottom equation by 3 and add. Right? We could do what I mean, whatever. So what I'm going to do, which I'd like to avoid subtracting if at all possible, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply that bottom equation by 3. So I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by 3. And that will allow me to cancel the y's. Okay, so that's that's what I'm going to do. So if I multiply that bottom equation, I can cancel the y's. So here's my my top equation. I'm going to rewrite that. Now my bottom equation. I'm going to multiply everything by three. I have three x plus three y equals negative thirty six. I'm multiplying everything by three, just like in the example. And now what I can do is add to cancel y. So I'm going to add to cancel y. I'm going to add these two. 2x and 3x is 5x. My y's cancel. I add these two. I get negative 30. 
solve for x, x equals negative 6. Right? So now I know that x equals negative 6. I can plug it back into, now I have three equations. Right? I have this equation, I have this equation, and I have this equation. I can plug in x equals negative 6 into either of the equations. Obviously, equation 2 is going to be the best bet. So I'm going to plug in my negative 6 so I can solve, you know, plug in x so I can solve for y. So I have negative 6 now <clears throat> plus y equals negative 12. And then I solve for y by adding 6 on both sides, and I get y equals negative 6. Well, that's interesting. Uh, sometimes it happens. So there's my x-coordinate and my y-coordinate. My x-coordinate is negative 6. My y-coordinate is negative 6. And before I go too crazy, I'm going to plug it in to another equation to see if, uh, if I'm good. Okay. So I have 2 times x, 2 times negative 6, minus 3 times y. Does that equal 6? 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. Minus 3 times minus 6 is positive 18. Guess what? Checks out. So that is most definitely my ordered pair solution. Okay, so that's my ordered pair solution for that third system. All right, so sometimes we can manipulate one of the equations. We can multiply one equation to allow something to cancel. Now, on to the most challenging one, number four. What in the world can we do with that system? Okay, so we're going to think of a way that we can <coughs> manipulate this system. And now here I'm going to start using labels because stuff is going to get kind of interesting. <laughs> So if we look, is there something we can multiply that top equation to allow a variable to cancel? If we multiply the top equation, can we cancel something out? No. If we multiply the bottom equation by something, can we cancel something out? No. So it looks like what we're going to have to do is multiply both equations. Hmm. We can multiply both equations and then cancel something out. Interesting stuff. Okay. So here's the what if. It's almost like finding a common denominator. Right? If you look at the x's, what would happen if we multiplied the top equation by 2 and the bottom equation by 5? We would have 10x here and 10x here. Right? Cancel. What would happen if we multiplied the top equation by 3 and the bottom equation by 2? Minus 6y here plus 6y here. Cancel. Okay, so we, we can do that, and you can do either one. Personally, I'm going to cancel the y's. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by 3. And I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by 2. And then I can make two new equations and cancel a variable out. So now I'm going to label. I'm going to call this, this first equation equation 1, the second equation equation 2. I'm going to create an equation 3. I'm going to create an equation 3. I'm going to multiply the top equation by 3. So 3 times 5x. 15x minus 3 times 2y minus 6y, and then 3 times 19, which is minus 47, I think. 57. There we go. So I can t multiply the top equation by 3. I get equation number 3. I'm going to make a brand new equation, equation 4, by multiplying the second equation by 2. Right? I had to think, what would I do to cancel? So I have 2 times 2x, 4x, plus 6y equals 2 times 0 is still 0. Right? So I have two new equations. They're actually the same. Remember the first example, one, equation 1 and equation 3, identical graphs. Equation 2, equation 4, identical graphs. Okay, but I have two new equations that will allow a cancellation. So now I can add to cancel these out. I can add to cancel my y's. <coughs> so I add, and then I cancel y. And when I add the two equations of 15x and 4x gives me 19x, my y's cancel, and then negative 57. And now to solve for x, <coughs> I can divide both sides by 19. And it turns out that x equals negative 3. Is that true? Yeah, x equals negative 3. So, I have found my x. Now what I'm going to do is plug it back into either, e either equation. I have four different equations I can choose from. I can plug it back into equation 1, equation 2, equation 3, equation 4. 
You know what equation would be best? I'm all about equation two because I love working with zero. Zero is an easy number to work with. Okay, so I'm going to use the second equation and plug that x back in. Okay, so I have 2 times negative 3 plus 3y equals 0. And now I'm going to solve for y. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Then I add 6 on both sides. And I divide both sides by 3. And I find that y equals 2. So it looks like the ordered pair I have is negative 3, positive 2. But I am going to check it. Okay, I am going to check it just in case. So I'm going to check it into equation 1 just in case. Okay, so 5 times negative 3, 2 times 2, will that equal negative 19? 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. <clears throat> and negative 15 minus 4, spot on. I am good to go. There is my ordered pair solution. Okay, so I can manipulate both equations. So let's, let's, take a, let's take a quick review, and then we'll be done. All right, so we had this, this. This is our whole set of systems. We could add to cancel variables. We can subtract to cancel variables. We can multiply one equation, then add or subtract to cancel variables. Or we can multiply both equations and add or subtract to cancel variables. And that's how elimination works. And again, you can choose which, which would you like to use. Would you like to use substitution? Would you like to use elimination? That is called solving with algebra. Thank you.